the two way ANOVA is an extension of the one way ANOVA to two factors. So for example, we have a factor A with two levels, could be boys and girls, and then you have a factor B, for example, socioeconomic status with three levels, one, two, three. Then you have two factors, two main effects, factor A and factor B, and you have the interaction between the two, the interaction between factor A and factor B. So now we have a hypothesis for the main factor A. The null hypothesis is that the means are the same across the factors. And then the alternative hypothesis is that at least one of the means is different from another. You have the hypothesis for factor B. Here is the same thing. That the means are the same across the factors and the alternative hypothesis that at least one mean is different from each other in this this factor and then thirdly you have the interaction between factor a and b and there it's about testing an interaction action effect so the null hypothesis that there is no interaction effect and the alternative uh, hypothesis is that there is an interaction effect. Let's do this with a example. Let's say factor A is boys and girls, two levels. So here the question for the main effect would be, is there a difference between the genders? Then we have a second factor, socioeconomic background, low, medium and high. And there you would ask, do the backgrounds differ in test scores? And then you get an interaction between gender and socioeconomic background. Do genders differ depending on background? So if we look at this table, you have a factor A, which would be male, the total average of male, and female, total average of female. The question will be, do these two levels differ? That's main effect A. Then we have the same question for the main effect B. Does the, the, do the three levels of socioeconomic background differ from each other? And then thirdly, we have the interaction effect. This, are, this is the cells in here. So we have these six different cells. And the question is, do they differ depending on the factor A and factor B? So again, the NOVA with two factors is that there is a two independent variables with two or more levels. Factor A has a main effect, factor B has a main effect, and then thirdly, the interaction factor between uh, the interaction between factor A and factor B. That's the interaction effect. For example, factor A, are grades different if you have different grades? Factor B, are boys and girls different? And interaction effect is the grade gender, are boys and girls in the different grades different? Now we can think of this as an egg carton principle. For example, the most, the, the, the easiest way or the simplest form is two factors a and b with two levels each right if we apply the same principle to a factor a with two levels and a factor b with three levels we get a two by three egg carton and you can have the same thing for a three by three matrix or a six by five or ten by ten or whatever your heart desires The ANOVA table is a little bit more complicated in this two-way ANOVA comparing it to the one-way, but the same principles apply. We have a within-group factor, a within-group 
uh, mean squares, this one here. This is the within uh, mean squares, this within variation within each group. And we compare this to the variation uh, for interactions, to the variation for factor 1, and the variation for factor 2. And here again, the same principles. We calculate sums of squares for factor 1. We determine the degrees of freedom, and then we divide sums of squares by degrees of freedom, gives us the mean squares for factor 1. Here again, we have an f value associated with this mean squares and these degrees of freedom, and a probability that's associated with this f factor. If the probability is below 0 0.05, we're talking about a significant main effect for factor A. Same thing for factor B. Sums of squares divided by degrees of freedom gives you the mean squares. Mean squares divided by the mean squares within gives you an f value. Then you get a probability for that f value. And that determines if the, the factor 2 here, factor B, is significant. And lastly, we also have an interaction and we calculate the sums of squares for an interaction divided by the degrees of freedom of rows times degrees of freedom of columns gives you mean squares. We again compare this mean squares to the means within and get an f value for which we can calculate a probability. If we get a significant value here below 0.05 we speak of a significant interaction effect.